This is Black Sonata. Um, the story is the identity of the Dark Lady from Shakespeare's sonnets has eluded scholars and historians for more than four centuries. In Black Sonata, you will pursue the elusive lady through the streets and alleyways of Elizabethan London, catching glimpses and whispers which may yield clues to her identity. However, not all of the evidence is clear. You will need to sharpen your wits if you are to finally unmask the Dark Lady before she slips quietly from the pages of history and is lost. Black Sonata is a solitary hidden movement and induction tool for ages 12 and up. Um, oh, thanks, Kumi. Yeah, the, the PNP is actually pretty good. Like, it has instructions on how to do it pretty well. So, um, it, it's just a lot of printing and assembling, gluing together. But, but it has pretty good instructions if it's your, if you're new to print and play like I was. <laughs> Um, so, in this game, I'm this pawn, I'm trying to find the Dark Lady, um, and then identify who she is. So, each of these cards, th this is who the Dark Lady is, and each of these cards has a different three, um, symbols on it, and the three symbols are what will identify her. Um, so in order to find her, I need to find clues from the other cards, and they say, like, they have symbols on each card and it says like how many match with this one um, and so i use that to deduce who this one is but to get those clues i need to be moving around this map so the dark lady is in a hidden location we don't know where she is but i have to go find her and the the location is determined by this deck which has I, i've already set it up um it, i've set it up according to letters that are on the top of the deck um and each time a, a card is going to go to the bottom of the deck and it tells you where possible places she can be. Like this icon means that she is either here because it has that icon or here. Um, so anywhere with that icon. And then she's going to move and each time she moves she can move one space. So like she'll be able to move to one space and I'll see where she moves and it, what icon she moves to and that will narrow down where she can be. So I'm going to try to land on her and then catch her and if I do or like if I land on her space and it is her then I get a clue as to who she is and then once I figure out who she is then I'll have to land on her again and confront her and that's how you win um so that's like the basic overview of how you play I uh I'll get into more of the mechanics as I play because this is a solo game so um yeah, I'll start now. So each turn, is there a, no, I don't think there is a player three card. Was there one here in the print and play? I don't think there is. I feel like there was a, oh, here. There was a setup and, is that, nope. Okay, so I don't know if the actual card that doesn't have this card. Huh. So the print and play has a nice card for setup and like a player aid card. So I'm going to actually have this. I don't think the published version has that. <laughs> but it, it the player aid kind of helps. Maybe it's just like in the rules or something. Oh, there's a quick summary here. Yeah, yeah, the back of the rules. Oh, yes, okay, this this is... The back of the rules is the player aid. <laughs> that makes sense. Okay. So, um, first, first the Dark Lady moves, and then it's my turn, and I can either move, search, or use a fog card, or confront her. Um, so, the way she moves, she's here, and then she moves one space, and now she's at a beer place. So, um, that means that she's at a beer place that was one space away from here. So, like, if she were here, she could not have moved here or here because those are not beer places, but she could have moved here. Same here, she could have moved. Oh, yay! Thank you for the raid, Time Roller! How are you? Um, I'm playing Black Sonata, which is a solo deduction game. Um... I, what, what were you playing?
Um, so yeah, so she could have moved here, or from here, she could have also moved here or here. So she is now in one of these two places, I know. Um, also, like, as the game goes on, the deck's gonna, it's gonna go through the deck multiple times, so I kind of want to remember where she went. So, like, I need to remember that she started out in one of these places and then moved to one of these places, because she'll be in the same spot. Um, yeah. So, now it's my turn. Um, oh, also, every time I move, I get the location that I moved to. So, I'm gonna move here, and then I, I, I get this location. Um, here because you need the location card in order to search it. And that's my turn. <laughs> and once you get move, get all of these locations, I get this clue card, and that's like another clue. Oh, you're playing Carpe Diem. Fun. Um, OK, so now it's her turn again. So she moves to a cross. So. She was either here or here. So this one is not connected to a cross, but this one is, um, and this is the only one. So she, so I know now that she has to be there, uh, which is kind of far away from me. So I was gonna, okay, maybe I should move back this way and go, okay. I'm gonna move that that way because I want to intercept her because I need to find her. And this plays pretty quickly, so like each turn. So she goes back to a beer, so she's back here. So I'm gonna go here to Cornhill. Um, so Cornhill. Oof, but if she moves to Cornhill, I won't know if she's there or here. Cause like, if she moves to coin, well, we'll see. It's her turn now. Oh, she's moving to a coin. So she now can be here or here. Um, so on my turn, I, I think I will just try searching. So the way searching works is these fog cards um, replace the the card um, that she was at. So once I search, like I can't in the next time I go through the deck, I won't be able to search again at this um, location card or like during this card movement uh, because this is going to replace this card. So, um, so I go like that, and then you. Um, let me make sure I'm doing this right, <laughs> the right way. Okay, yeah, so you put this on top of the location that I'm at. So I'm at Cornhill, so I put this on top like this, whoop, whoop, and then flip it over. Oh, so she is not there. So if, if she were there, it would be black um, through this magnifying glass circle thing. So she is not there. That means I did not find her. Um, and then she runs away. So this goes away. Um, if if it were later in the game, she would run multiple steps, but it is not, so she does not run right now. So I know she's not there, so that means she's here. <laughs> um, ah, okay. So she goes to a cross, so she, now she's here. Ah, she's running away from me. Okay, I guess I just need to follow her. I'm not sure how, how I'm gonna catch up. Well, well, she might come back towards me, right? Yeah, okay. So, coins, yes, she's coming back towards me. But, uh, should I just wait here again? No, because I don't know. This is tough, okay, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna go on her spot. Even though that's probably not the best thing. <laughs> but. Okay. Hi, Atticus. I am playing Black Sonata. So now she's here or here, and I'm not sure which one, but I'm just going to keep like going around to different places now. <laughs> uh, and now she's at a house. Oh gosh, so she could be here. Or here. Ha! Huh. I don't know. I don't know. Super fancy version. Yes, this is a published version rather than the print and play version. So I'm just gonna keep following this place and getting all of these getting all of these location cards. Um 
Yeah, so it's not like a deluxe version. It's just the published version, I think, uh, by TGG Games. I got a review copy. Um, okay, so she's got a house again. So this one is not actually connected to any houses. So she's there. All right, so I, did, I have followed the correct version. So I'm going to just keep following. Black star, okay. Um, although, yeah, I guess that's fine. She went to a tree, so I think she's there now. Okay. I need to actually like land on her spot, which is hard because she if she's one step ahead of me, then I won't land on her spot. So I'm actually going to wait, and then maybe she'll come back here and hope that she comes back here. Um, it's because I can pass on my turn. Uh, okay, she, so she goes to, yes, she does come back here. Boom. Okay, so I need to remember it next time that she was like around here, and then she went around here like that. Because next time I'm going to have to catch her as she comes around here. So I think this should be correct, hopefully, if, if I did this right. <laughs> So I am searching now in Black Friars. So I put this under. Boop. Yay! I found her. For I have sworn thee, fair and thought thee bright, who art as black as hell, as dark as night. Okay. That's just, I guess, Shakespeare stuff. Um. Okay. So because I found her, I get to get a clue card. So I take the top clue card from here. Doo -doo -doo. And this is now my clue card. Yay. So the way this works is it has three tokens here. This one, this one, and this one. And it's saying that um, I, I match the suit to here. So this suit is the dark lady and there's one here. It says number one. Um, so that means that one of these matches this person. So I know it has one from these three. Okay, and then I guess two from these four. So that's useful. Okay, now, um, now after I, I, I search for the dark lady, she flees. So, um, yeah, so she flees. That means she goes one space for each clue I have. I only have one clue, so she just goes one space, which is like that. So I, I kind of know I can keep track of it, but as I get more clues, it's going to go through the deck like more, more cards at once, so she'll be moving multiple spaces away, and it'll be harder to keep track of her. So now it's her turn, um, and she goes onto a money space, so she is here. <sighs> I think I'll move here. Okay, and then she moves to a church space. So it could be here or here. Do you think I should risk searching for her again? It's 50-50. What do you think? Hmm. I'm not sure. Okay. Well, well, last time when I risked it and it was 50-50, I didn't find her. So this time if I risk it, I will find her because that's totally how probability works, right? <laughs> no, I think I'll, I'll risk it. Risk it, risk it. Okay. Also, if this deck runs out, um, I lose. So, okay. So I am searching at St. Paul's. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes! Probability worked! <laughs> okay, so she is here. Boom. Um, oh, right, should I read this? All this the world well knows, yet none knows well, to shun the heaven that leads men to this hell. Yeah, it's very uh, dark. Okay. Well, yes, it is it's the dark lady, right? <laughs> okay. So I get a clue card. Yay! And 
Um, okay, so of heart, this one, and crown, there is one. Oof. So it could be either these two or one from here, I guess. Yeah. I'll, I will need more clues. So, but now that I have two clue cards, I'm going to have to move two cards without looking. So she will have moved a space that I didn't see and then is now at a tree. So she could be two, she would be two spaces away to get to a tree. So she could be here um, or here. And I think that's it. Okay. Boom, boom, boom. There, okay. And then she, now she goes again, it's her turn. She goes to a house, which could be here, here, or here. Three possible places, oh my gosh. Um, I think I'm just, I'm gonna go here just because I haven't been here yet. And I'm uh, gathering the, the location cards. That's a good thing to do. Okay, now it's her turn. She goes to a cross. So that's either here or here, I think. And this one's not next to a cross. Okay. Hmm. Which ones do I still need to get? Do I need this one, this one, and this one? Okay. I'm going to go here just to get the location. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not sure when I should try cutting her off. And I'm not going to remember her path. This is hard. She goes to a house. So that's either here or here. Um, okay, I'm going to go back here. <laughs> she goes to a theater. Okay, so that's either here or here. Oh, also, I'm playing like the regular version, but but you can set up these cards um, in an advanced version, and then instead of moving every turn, she could stay in the same spot. So like, if she were here, she could have stayed in the theater spot or moved. But I'm playing the version where she does move one space exactly every card. Okay, so I'm gonna go here so I get the card. Okay, and then she moves to a house. Oof, getting so many places that they can be. Um, ugh. Okay, I'm actually gonna wait. I'm gonna hold off on taking this last location because once I get this last location, I wait. Do I have to get the clue or can I wait? Let me see. Um. Oh, I, I can, okay, I don't have to do it. Okay, so I'm, I'm actually gonna go down here. So I have this, and I can reveal this clue at any time, but I'm not gonna do it yet because when I have more clues, then she runs away further. So I'm gonna wait until I have another good clue and then um, reveal it later. Okay, so now it's her turn. She moves to coins. So this is not near any coins, so she wasn't here. This is near coin, so um, oof, I think she is right here on the coins. Okay, so now, hmm, is she gonna go here or maybe down to the beer? I'm gonna go down here and, and guess, hope that she comes down to the beer. Nope, she did not. Okay, <laughs> so she's here and we're here. Hmm. Huh. All right, I'm just going to stay where I am and hope she comes down to me. <laughs> oh my gosh, it worked, I think. Okay, so she could be here, and I don't think anywhere else is beer. Connected to beer, yeah. Woohoo! Ha ha. I was just hanging out at the pub, waiting. <laughs> so, 
I mean, it's Thursday night, so she needed a drink, right? Okay, <laughs> so put this under here. Search at East Chief. This should be right. Yes! Woohoo! Yet do not so, but since I am near a slain, kill me outright with looks and rid my pain. Okay. All right, so one more clue card. Hopefully this is useful. Um, okay, so uh, this one. There are either out of ring, crown, and heart. There are either zero or two. Um, yeah, so when there's a slash like that, it's either zero or two. That means, because like the other one, has that there's two cards of each suit um, and then this one has a thing so she's going to run away three so um, one two oh, this doesn't count I think um, it, it reached the end of the deck I, I need to count see if that counts as one or not um, so when I reach the end of the deck uh, where's the end of the deck? Okay, they don't count towards the card to move. So the countdown, okay, is going to happen. Um, so one, two, three. She's going to move three like that. <laughs> but the countdown is going to go down, uh, like, <laughs> whoopsies, like, like this to one. Okay, and that's at the bottom of the deck. And now she's at a beer. Um, and this was like near the beginning. So I remember her being around here and then going down that way, right? So I don't know. She could be here again. I don't know. But I am going to uh, take this clue now. And if she's here again, oh, I wonder if I can just like confront her and win. Um, So, um, what was I looking for? Yeah, like, I think whenever, yeah. Th th so I'm going to add this to my clues. Okay. So this has ring, heart, and music note. And there's one that matches. But now, since I know this was zero or two, and it has the ring and the heart, um, so the two was this one. That means that this one has zero that match ring, heart, and a uh, crown. So these do not match. That means that this one is on there. So um, this music note, because these are not on there. Ring and heart. Um, so zero of these match. Of these, heart, crown, and this, one of them match. So the heart and crown are not on there, so it's that one. And then this one, heart, then, and that, okay, one of them match out of these three. So that one is not on there. That means this one's on there. So, um, that, that's it. If this is the dark lady. So I have, I'm pretty sure I have determined who the dark lady is. So she, but she's going to move. Okay. So she, now it's her turn. She's moving to a cross, um, which is here. Okay. So she, I'm pretty sure she's there, right? Okay, wait, wait, she she had moved three, so one, one, two, three. These are the only beer places, right? She was in a beer place? Okay, yeah. Um so yeah, she she's at a cross now from a beer place, so that's here. So I think I'm gonna wait here and hope she comes back. Oh, oh, did she go to coins? Because <laughs> this was near the beginning. I remember there being coins near the beginning. Hmm. I don't know. Okay, I'm gonna. Oof. Okay, so there was. I remember there being beer. Right? There was beer, then cross. Would it have gone back to beer? Because I know eventually it was down here. 
but I don't know if she went here or maybe it was beer. Hmm. No, I'll stay here. <gasps> yes, okay, back to beer. So I think she's here now. And then I'm going to search for her. Um, so I have to search her and then confront. And that, that's how I would uh, win. So, uh, where am I? East, cheap. Yay! That's where she is! And then I'm confronting and saying that it's this one. So if I'm wrong, then I just lose the game. But if I'm right, then I win. And this, this, and yes! Woohoo! See, I got all three. They're, they were in the wrong order, but that's fine. Yay! So I won. Um, oh, wow. I did really well, I think. So the, the scoring, because I only went through the deck once and then like a little bit. So the scoring ba is based on how far down you go through the deck. Um, okay, count the number of cards on the top of the stealth deck up to the countdown card. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 22, 23. And then you add 26 because there's 26 cards in the deck. So it's basically like how many movement points she has left. Um, uh, so 23 plus 26, 49, right? So I got 49 points. Um, plus two points for each card left in the fog deck. Oh. And then any adjustments for difficulty? I just played normal difficulty, so I don't think there are any adjustments. Um, so I was 49, and then 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. So 59 points. Oh, so close. <laughs> um so 41 to 60 is fair youth made greater than 60 is is the biggest score in mortal bard and i got 59 points yay so that was i i did really well i think um well because i got i got lucky on the 50 50 chance there and then like kind of gambling on staying in places and trying to catch her. I, I got that, so that was nice. Um, yeah. But yeah, wow, it, to get 60 points or greater than 60 points, that's tough. I, I guess I would have had to not make the mistake because if I had had two more points, right? So if I hadn't searched in that one place where I searched and was wrong, then I would have had 60 points. Okay. But yeah, so that's Black Sonata. Um, I still really like it. <laughs> and yeah, this is these these are so nice. Look at these, way better than like cubes. I like the little shaped wooden things. And then the deduction tokens being double sided like that is nice. Um, actually, the print and play might have double sided ones. Let me see. I don't remember. Oh, I guess they are. Yeah, the print and play is double sided. Um, just not as obvious. <laughs> so yeah, if you like deduction games um, and want to play a solo one, like this is good. It's got two layers of deduction with the hidden movement. Uh, the hidden movement deduction is relatively straightforward once once you find her, and but then she like goes away, and then yeah. So so. Um, but yeah, yeah, that one's fun. And then and then there's the deduction of the cards, which is a little more, more deduction-y, I think, than the hidden movement part. But yeah, it was really good. And you're not supposed to look at these too closely because um, they use the same ones each time. So you don't want to memorize those clue cards. <laughs> yeah, so that's Black Sonata. The published version. Um, yeah, this was TGG Games. I got a review copy from them. Um, their website is in the chat. So uh, if you're interested, you can go get them. Oh, and I'll show you how the how this is set up. Is like there's these letters 
on the location cards, it's just letters on the top of them. And so you put them in alphabetical order. So I, I used the second column uh, because I did the first column last time. There's C, D, E, and like, so it has eight different setups. This bottom one is the hard one where she doesn't have to move. She can stay in the same spot. Um, yeah, so you put them in order and then it does it. And so it has like different movements based on what order you do. So that's really cool. The, the designer managed to do that. Um, which is cool. I may pick this one up eventually. My current solo game is Under Falling Skies and Crystal Oh, thank you. Oh, cool. Yeah, Under Falling Skies is fun too. Well, I only played the print and play, which the published version of that has a lot more, not a lot different things than the print and play, right? Because it has like a campaign and stuff. Um, yeah, so I think, yeah, I'm going to put this away. Uh, I'm going to go back to my face view for now as I'm putting this away. Yeah, it's neat the way Saxon already works. I agree. Oh, also, it came with these tuck boxes for the cards. I don't know if I want to keep them because the game, like, it also has an insert tray, which the cards can fit into. And putting them into tuck boxes is kind of annoying. But I don't know. Let's see. I'll, I'll put them in tuck boxes for now. <laughs> um, once you've done the eight setups, would the game be done? Well, you can do it like. The setup is just for the way her movement works, and um, if you're like me, you wouldn't have remembered, like, only if you remember her entire movement for all of them, um, then you, you would know where she goes, but there's still, like, the other part of the junction, which is random each time you pick a random card, uh, so I think it would still be good. Also, in the rule book, there are additional... Um, additional stealth deck sequences, so it gives you other setups here. So easy, moderate difficulty, and hard sequence. <laughs> so um, that gives you six of each of those, plus very easy, like one, one, 30 cards. Uh, okay, so gives you two. Two very easy sequences plus six each, easy, moderate, and hard. Um, so there's a lot. <laughs> but those are like the movement sequences, which is just half of it. And um, yeah, and then like once you play through all of those, you probably won't remember all of them and just can go pick and one and do it again. Or I, I don't, I wouldn't remember all of them. I don't know. Yeah, because it's not like a story where it's like, oh, this person killed this person or something, it, like in Tragedy Looper or something, where if you've played it, you probably remember it. Because in here, it's the hidden movement is harder to remember if you've done it, I think. 